Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconan, along with Brianna Valeski, and we have John Fawcett on the line. He's a founder and CEO of Quantopian. John, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Good morning. How are you, Joel? Good. Well, uh, my first question to you is you were a f uh, an analyst at a fundamental equity hedge fund. And you That's went, right. And you went from that to starting your own quant firm. What, what was the turning point? Uh, Why did you decide to do this? It, uh, well, it wasn't like a single point. <laughs> it took a little bit of time. I, um, I was a, a material science undergrad, you know, so kind of like a science guy. Uh, I, I programmed professionally a little while <clears throat> before becoming a um, hedge fund analyst. And while I was at the hedge fund, I was doing a lot of coding. And um, being an analyst at a um, fundamental, fundamentally driven equity shop uh, is uh, very, very different than being an engineer. Uh, and so it wasn't a great fit. It was kind of a fish out of water situation for me. So um, the portfolio manager there, fortunately, uh, was a super guy. And he um, had this idea that we should start a software company together, uh, which we did uh, back in 2002. And that was uh, software for analysts. And I did that for about nine years. And toward the end of it, uh, after we were acquired, um, I met Quants for the first time. And it was just this epiphany where, you know, I thought to myself, oh, my God, here, here are my people, this uh, guys that are writing software uh, to trade in the markets. Because I, I loved the front row seat of being in finance and caring about all, all uh, current events and the way that the markets work. Uh, but I just didn't love picking individual stocks. And so with uh, when I started to learn about Quant, it was just everything I loved. It was software, very, very systematic, very, very uh, well-organized thinking, planning ahead, testing, all things that kind of resonated with me as an engineer, um, plus, uh, you know, being in the markets and all the excitement that goes with it. Okay, and it, I mean, not high frequency, quantitative. You're looking for a quantitative edge uh, in the market. So your firm's looking for talent to bring in. What, what kind of people are you looking for? Are you looking for these people with the strong math and engineering and programming backgrounds? Uh, is there a minimum age or education? What are you looking for in the talent you bring into your firm? So our theory is that the more diverse the community of people we have working and, and researching through the Quantopian platform, the better. Um, and so I would basically say yes to all those things, you know, plus, uh, you know, people that are uh, market savvy. So kind of the minimum, the minimum technical requirement is sort of first year undergraduate um, level of programming. Uh, so it's not super advanced, but it, it is programming. If, if you're, you know, kind of an Excel jockey and you know how to, to really build elaborate spreadsheets and, and uh, do a little bit of uh, programming in that environment, it's, it's not much advanced beyond that. Um, I think people, people, you know, sort of like doing math in public, people get a little bit nervous when you say there's programming involved. But it's really just about being systematic in your thinking and then being able to write those rules down in code. Um, and we use a language that's, that's pretty friendly and taught, taught in a lot of... Um, universities and taught uh, online and in many different places. Uh, so it's, it's pretty easy to learn. But beyond that, um, what we're looking for are people, uh, firstly, that are passionate about this style of investing um, because it, it's actually a lot of work to sit down and have an idea and, and try to make it systematic enough that you could program it. Um, and some people love that. You know, it's, you know, it's very, very exciting to have this idea and then uh, put down the instructions, and then watch the machine do it for you. Um, and so, if that, if that, if, you know, if you can imagine doing that and seeing the results and seeing trades placed into your brokerage account uh, automatically by the software, um, you know, if that if that's the type of thing that gets you excited, uh, like it does for me, then uh, almost any background <clears throat> will work because it's just a you know set of skills you have to learn. Um, what we have today is is very very broad spectrum. You know, everything from I think we've got uh, high school students who have, have used the back tester to, to learn about this, all the way up to uh, professional quants uh, who who trade their personal accounts through Quantopian. Okay, and uh, what about um, what products do they trade? 
So, <clears throat> excuse me. So today, Quantopian is 100% uh, U.S. equities uh, in, in ETFs. So any, anything that's listed on the U.S. Uh, equity exchanges. Um, and that's uh, everything that we trade today. Uh, we're currently working on adding U.S. futures, which is probably the most requested uh, feature in Quantopian history. Um, and uh, we're in the process of building that. We'll be rolling it out piece by piece over the course of the rest of this year. Okay, and uh, moving on here, uh, you're doing the different trading, different platforms. What do, what are people finding the most success in? Is it equities and or particular sectors? Where, where are they finding their success? So we run these contests uh, each month, uh, which are a combination of back testing, where we we run the algorithm over uh, a few years of historical data, um, and then uh, we also do one month of uh, live paper trading. <clears throat> and so um, I think uh, it was really you know very very interesting to run that contest over the past two months because we've had uh, you know kind of uh, extreme market. <laughs> two months ago, the market was on this great run. Uh, and the last month was really choppy. Um, and what's great about the uh, the out of sample or the sorry the live uh, portion of the test is um, the the live market conditions are um, you know a really tight filter for for the uh, contest. So in the first month we saw uh, someone who had a uh, kind of daily rebalancing for a long only very very diversified portfolio that it it did extremely well uh, that month. Um, and uh, ended up winning the contest. And then in the second month, um, because of uh, all the volatility and, and the uh, uh, down months, uh, the things that worked best were market-neutral kind of pair-oriented trading, uh, whether it's one or more pairs, uh, but you know, betting on spreads so that the, uh, the correlation to the market was very, very low. Uh, so in that second month, uh, all these uh, what we call low-correlated strategies uh, did very well. And what we're doing now actually is changing the scoring of the contest so that we're going to reward people with uh, low correlation. Because uh, to us, that's the holy grail uh, for any form of investing, but particularly quantitative investing. You want to have something, a strategy that's generating a return stream that doesn't correlate to the market. And if you have multiple strategies, you don't want them to be correlated to one another. Um, the, big, the big event in history for quantitative investing was in the summer of 2007. Uh, there was this incredible sort of mini flash crash just for the quants uh, in the summer of 07. And what had happened is a bunch of independently run hedge funds had ended up running very, very correlated strategies. Um, and so kind of the key for, for um, systematic investing is to have some confidence that you're not correlated. Um, and that's what's special about Quantopia. We have you know, thousands upon thousands of strategies uh, that we're measuring and checking every single day and so we can with confidence say you know the strategy is not correlated to the rest of the strategies that we have um, and what we've, we're finding is that these um, pair trading and spread trades are, are uh, a great way to find uncorrelated returns okay can you talk about like specific strategies or patterns or specific stocks that uh, the traders seem or the programmers seem to have most success in um, we so we um, have an interesting relationship with uh, our our traders where they're not employees and so the algorithms that they write are their own intellectual property um, and so we we are very very protective of uh, their IP um, and then there's uh, the community where things are shared and so there's there's a whole bunch of very very interesting strategies that are available uh, through our website um, and our community. And what we see uh, in, in the strategies that are shared are shared by users, made public. And uh, some of the most popular uh, and successful strategies there are uh, kind of portfolio optimization and, and uh, rebalancing strategies uh, where you can choose any set of securities and then feed them into this uh, algorithm that will rebalance it, you know, either daily or monthly um, and uh, optimize the, the allocations. Uh, so we have a... Um, one that's very, very popular that uh, people have cloned a lot. That's that's where you can kind of copy the strategy and run it yourself. And uh, that is a sector ETF rebound. So uh, what it does is very, very simple. There's a set of um, ETFs uh, for each uh, of the major U.S. industries. And it's just a simple, equal-weighted uh, strategy across those. 
Um, and so it's a way to, I, I guess it would be called a smart beta um, these days, but it's a way to avoid the market cap bias uh, that you can have uh, in big indices. Um, and that's been very popular and pretty successful over the past uh, 11 or 12 months. Okay, and uh, of course, a lot of back testing goes on. I bet. How much back testing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you guys do you require uh, you know before a system goes live? Oh, um, I don't know if I've ever quantified like before we go live. The um, the numbers we usually throw out there. We've got over three million years of back testing uh, done on the system so far. Uh, you know, every day, uh, pretty steadily, we're seeing you know hundreds of back tests per hour. Uh, so just uh, our, our user base now is global, and so it's sort of around-the-clock back testing uh, every single day. Uh, for our own uh, deployment, um, what we do is we, we have uh, 12 years of history, uh, and so what we do is we split that up. Uh, we split up the algorithms uh, so that we have a, a set of algorithms and data that we uh, call in sample that we can that we can test. Because a, a big risk with back testing is that. You know, you can imagine if you just keep running the back test and adjusting it and trying to make it work, eventually you'll find something that works perfectly over the last 12 years, but may or may not work at all in the next uh, month or year or two years or whatever. Uh, and that's called fitting. So that's a very, very um, significant risk with back testing. So you don't want to like overdo it. Uh, so what we do is we, break, we split up the data uh, and use some of it for kind of practicing and developing our, um, our stuff and then, uh, uh, test it out a sample before we turn it live. So generally speaking, we run everything over the full history. Uh, it's just that we split it up and, and um, reserve some for out sample. And then the other thing that's really powerful is uh, the way the back tester works is identical to the live trading environment. So once you have a strategy that can, you can back test, uh, you can then also move it into paper trading, and that's where we feed the, the fresh market data uh, as it happens into the algorithm, you can see it perform uh, intraday in simulation. And that's really powerful because you can get uh, what's called out-of-sample results, and that's where you're looking at data that the algo has never seen before, and so there's no risk that it's been uh, fitted to that data. And so you can get a little bit more confidence about the behavior. Uh, so there's that's the extra step that we do before we go live with real money. Uh, so we'll do a bunch of back testing, and then we'll do a bunch of live simulation, and then deploy with capital okay and um just you know so there's not any particular stocks that you can mention what about what about time frames i mean you have you know high frequency trading you know very very short term are you looking for you know those kind of systems to be developed are you looking you know more of a day trading swing trading or you're looking people to you know develop longer term strategies we like um we like strategies that trade uh, daily, uh, so you know as little as once a day, you know as much as once a minute. Uh, the reason that we like the, uh, I guess you would call like daily or, or intraday frequency, is that uh, provides a lot more data for us to evaluate. Uh, so if you're trading something, it's possible to build any frequency um, from minutely all the way up to you know monthly or quarterly or annual on Quantopian and test it. Uh, but if you are running an annual uh, strategy, it's only going to trade once a year. And even if you run a 12-year back test, you kind of only get 12 data points for how the, how the thing is behaving. Um, whereas if you have something that's trading on a, a daily basis, you know, we get a lot more data. Um, you, know, you get 250 points of data every year. <clears throat> and so you can have a little more confidence in the way that it's going to behave. So I think generally uh, for, for systematic it's good to have uh, a little bit more trading frequency because, again, it gives you more confidence, and that's that's the key is that all the testing that you're doing is only worthwhile if, if you can have a degree of confidence that's going to tell you something about the future. And it's hard to have confidence if you're only looking at you know, just a handful of data points. Uh, but that being said, we see, we see people trading um, sort of at the maximum frequency that we support, which is once a minute. Um, and uh, trading trading once a minute across a whole whole uh, cross section of, of securities, and then um, we also see <clears throat> people doing things like annual or, or quarterly or monthly rebalancing. Um, and in both cases, there's benefits to being systematic and automated. I mean, if you're if you're an independent trader and you have a, a monthly rebalance, um, 
you can build in all kinds of rules about when you want that to happen. You don't have to worry about forgetting. You know, the machine will take care of it. Uh, if you're trading at a slightly higher frequency, like intraday, um, you know, it, it can be a grind to be maintaining a portfolio every single market day. Um, you know, it's hard to step away and, and uh, think about what your next uh, idea will be. Or, um, you know, if you're, you're running a business, it's hard to go out and find customers. So, um, you know, the automation at all levels, I think, is, is uh, really powerful. Uh, just, just in terms of you know productivity, and then the discipline that comes with it is is also fantastic. You know, as everyone knows, it's hard to um, stick to your stick to your uh, guns when when things get crazy. Uh, just looking at all the different systems, I mean, you watch all the different time frames. Does it does it ever give you kind of a an opinion on the market, the overall market, when you see all the systems lining up one way or another? Um. Not yet. I think uh, there's uh, there's an idea in, in systematic trading that you run what are called um, sentinel uh, strategies or probe strategies, and um, they're kind of like market factors. And so you you can run a uh, momentum strategy in the market and monitor its returns. You can run a mean reversion uh, strategy in the market and monitor its returns. And um, you could then think of those strategies as inputs. Uh, or kind of uh, market signals, and um, so that is that is a uh, kind of uh, market direction indicator that people in the industry uh, look at. Uh, we're not doing that yet, just because we're so focused on getting uh, the individual strategies that people are running, um, you know, to to be successful and and to uh, um, you know operationally be be um, solid. So uh, I think in the future there's there's uh, a lot of interesting things we, can, things we can do with with things like Sentinel strategies, which you can think of them almost they're almost like an index, but um, instead of instead of just being um, kind of like handpicked securities or like a simple rule, uh, they can tell you a little bit more about the market. Um, and uh, you know, I think I think that's a, a really interesting really interesting direction for us in the future. Do you have any uh, anybody that's just focusing like on one particular stock and designing systems for that, and you know just trying to you know find a trend or something along those lines, or do you uh, encourage people to look at a broader spectrum? It's the latter. I mean, we we definitely um, you know as you can probably tell from my answers, right? I'm not I'm not a stock picker. We didn't we didn't build a system to do that. Okay. Um, I like to think about uh, criteria. So you know, I'm I, mean, I want to look at stocks that are in a certain market cap range, or I want to look at stocks that are in multiple industries, or I want to look at stocks that have a historical statistical relationship to one another. Um, and it's more about <clears throat> understanding uh, the way the data is behaving. And I think it's really important in systematic uh, strategies um, to have data that covers, uh, you know, a pretty wide selection of securities. Uh, because, uh, again, the, the more securities that you're screening, um, and uh, evaluating, the more confidence you can have that your strategy is going to work because, again, you're looking at more data. Um, and so the thing that's really special about um, systematic investing is, you know, if you think about having a system and exercising it on one stock, you can imagine a person doing that. But if you think about doing 10 stocks or 100 stocks or 1,000 stocks, um, you know, it's just something that a single person can't possibly maintain and can't monitor. Um, and so with systematic, it's always good if you can think about making your strategy work cross-sectionally, you know, across multiple uh, pretty large number of securities uh, to be looking for the opportunities rather than, rather than um, you know, honing in on a single, single security. Um, so that's, you know, our, our invest, investment philosophy is if you want to think about the criteria for the investor, if you're a value investor, right, um, there's, there's, Clear criteria that you could think about and define and be very systematic about. Uh, if you're a momentum investor, it's the same thing. Um, and so rather than think about the individual stocks or securities or sectors, uh, our bias is to, to think uh, about the properties of the investments you want to make, what if, you know, in, in the abstract, and then set the machine to uh, go and find those for you. We've been on the line with John Fawcett. He's the founder and CEO of Quantopian, trying to make sense out of math and the markets. We appreciate you coming on, talking about your company, and uh, we hope to talk to you again soon, John. Thanks so much.